stop what you're doing. We're gonna talk about something super duper interesting if you are a data nerd and if you're in the ad tech space. We're gonna talk about pixels. Pixels are incredibly important because they allow you to track sales generated from an ad campaign. They allow you to understand when a lead comes in uh, and it gives you a, an addressable outcome to measure for your advertising campaigns. And uh, we're often uh, helping our agency clients and our advertisers figure out um, how to place the pixels. Um, and, and we routinely advise them on the best way to, to place them. So let's go into some detail about how to look at pixels, where to place them, and, and how to think about pixels. So we're going to start with my website, um, brillmedia.co. And uh, we're looking at Ghostery. And Ghostery is a great tool. Uh, for consumers, it's a good ad blocker. Um, for business people in the ad tech space, it's good for us to track um, pixels. And we also have Facebook, right? So um, what this is, this number nine ending in 9893 is our unique pixel ID for Facebook. And we have a standard event here called page view. So we're gonna start with Facebook, right? So what happens is whenever you go on any, on most websites, especially when you know you have a Facebook pixel placed, um, you have a standard event and the standard event page view is uh, ubiquitous across across the web it identifies when someone loads a page um, much more interestingly we have uh, purchase standard events and the purchase standard event helps an advertiser understand when uh, an ad was generated an ad was delivered and it resulted in a purchase uh, we also have lead generation um, standard event which tells the advertiser when a lead was generated as a result of an ad being uh, delivered um, and there's many others like add to cart so you can identify people who have visited your page who have added a product or set of products to the site um, and then uh, that that add to cart uh, standard event fires and the key point here is the ability to identify audiences, audience interests, interests, and segregate users uh, for individual ad uh, messages that they should be delivering. So when we look at my site, hyperlocal, enterprise, small business. So the person who is visiting the small business page might have very different interests. Uh, they might be a, a restaurant who wants to advertise two to five miles around an address, whereas an enterprise advertiser. Um, wants to build programmatic ecosystems. And then you have hyperlocal is an advertiser that wants to use uh, latitude and longitude data to make, make decisions about who to serve ads to. So the idea here is this person is interested in one thing, another thing, and yet another thing. And by having pixel code on my site, I get to identify the individual messages that I want to serve ads uh, to individual users. Um, and pixel code allows me to do that. Um, when we look at the Trade Desk, the Trade Desk is an immensely powerful uh, ad buying platform that we use for a lot of our clients. And what you have here is this identifier. And this is going to load up, and we're going to click on this. And what you see here is ADV is this number. ADV is the advertiser. So in this case, we went into the Trade Desk and we said, okay, the advertiser is Brill Media. So anything that happens when this unique number loads is identified for our advertiser. And then we have this other identifier, JJSTONZ. This is for the pixel. And this basically identifies any action that's related to our website. And when this pixel fires, uh, we know that's related to this to our brillmedia.co campaign. Um, and so when we look at the trade desk, and I'm going to move over to the trade desk, we have uh, this pixel. And if we go into details, we have this identifier, which is the advertiser, and this is for the pixel. And this is a JavaScript pixel. It's a universal pixel, just like Facebook has their, their pixel. The functionality for these pixels allow us to place the code in the header and footer of the website, so one or the other, and um, allows us to map actions tied to individual URLs. So going back to our website, what's interesting is I can go into the trade desk and say anytime a person goes to brillmedia.co slash hyperlocal, I want to know, I want to separate, I want to track those individual actions. 
And then when someone goes to brillmedia.co slash enterprise, I want to separate and, and, and track those individual actions and so yet again for small business. And then it allows me to go into the trade desk and say, okay, for everyone who vers visited the hyperlocal page, I want to serve them an ad that talks about hyperlocal. When someone visited the small business page, I want to serve them an ad that talks about small business. So I get to identify different user interests and serve them an ad based on what I know they're interested in. So certainly for a store, if you sell flowers and cards, there's a certain segment of your user base who went to the flowers page, and then a certain segment who went to the cards page, serve them each ads, um, and then you can go a lot further, right? With this understanding, you can, you can deploy dynamic creative, right? So I don't just wanna serve ads to people who visited the flowers page, I wanna serve them ads with roses in them because I know they just were interested in you know the last page that they looked at on the site was roses so a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of data uh, decisioning comes in here and it all starts with the proper uh, pixel placement so the last thing that I want to share with you is when we look at you know how do we set up ghostry ghostry is really this great tracker it's also like I said a, an ad blocker for consumers um, how do we how do we set this up? All right, so I had to do a little bit of digging because it's not easy to find. You gotta go to this button here, click on more tools and click on extensions. And you type in ghostery, go to details, extension options. And what you get to do is set up how the extension option should work. So click on yes. Uh, this allows me to block ads. I, d I don't wanna block ads. I wanna block nothing. I want to turn these off. I want to go to next and I want to be done. So the idea here is if you download Ghost3 uh, without doing this stuff, you're going to start blocking ads, which you may have a preference to do. If you are interested in not blocking ads because you work in the ad business or something, um, you want to go through these steps. So the idea here is, you know, we have Facebook Pixel Helper that helps you understand what's going on with, you know, which pixels are firing on your page. You have Ghostry, which helps you identify which trackers are on your page. And for from an ad ops perspective, you really want to use that use this to identify if your pixels are firing on your on your designated pages. All right, guys, have a good day.